We're good. Teach me grappling. Everyone, I'm back. Brian Peterson. I've got Sachin Bot. Um, something I've been noticing, because uh, I, I do a little YouTubing from now and, now and then. Every now and then I do a little bit. Uh, John Danaher, little shout out to him. Never met him. Uh, great instructor, as you guys know. He's probably the most sought after instructor right now um, because of all his, his students, uh, Gordon Ryan, uh, Gary Tonin, uh, even Eddie Cummings, even though he's not with him anymore. He's produced all these great guys and, and he's helped George St. Pierre and so on and so forth. Outstanding students and uh, so he's a great coach. He's been doing videos, if you guys have seen him, on the uh, guillotine, the high elbow guillotine in particular, um, in the front headlock. So um, I'm just gonna show some of my stuff that I do uh, for when the, the high elbow guillotine fails. The first one I'm gonna show is, is uh, kind of like a Marcelo Garcia style with, with, with the, when I come on top, I'm gonna still choke him with the high elbow. So he's gonna go double leg. In fact, we'll just go to the knees. That's fine. Go to the knees. Okay, so just to, to kind of get into the mix. I'm not gonna go into great detail right here with, with, with it. If you guys wanna reference John Danaher's video, he just, again, it's fairly recent. It's really good stuff. He talks about creating the space and shifting of the head to, in order to get a high elbow, okay? So once we get this high elbow guillotine, um, remember, what he wants to do is he wants to put his right leg up on the double leg. Go ahead and grab double leg. And then he wants to drive me in this direction, okay? I see that, he'll take me down. And then now once he, I'm here, it's really hard to, to do much. He's gonna probably pass my guard, and it, especially right now, I have no guillotine. So I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna lose. And then the next time I fight him, I'm gonna be a little bit smarter. And, and he goes for the, uh, for the double leg. I'm gonna put my leg up as well. So what I'm doing is I'm counterbalancing his drive, okay? So he's gonna push off his right leg, I'm gonna push off my right leg. I've got his neck, he's got my legs. Okay, as he starts to drive me to the left, his left, I'm driving him to my left. Now, he could easily take me that way or take me straight. He could take me like this, okay, that's fine. Or he could take me straight to my back or to my butt. So he could also just charge straight forward and that'll also give me a great opportunity to get this guillotine, which is what I want. So I'm, I'm putting him in a corner. When he has the double leg, I my leg up, I'm not giving him the option to drive me this direction, okay? I'm gonna make some space. So I push against him, I make some space, and I'm ready for the high elbow guillotine. Okay, here's my grip, okay? Uh, don't slide down, I know some of you guys feel like you're unflexible, you can't do this. You wanna go down to your pinky finger, try not to do that. Make a grip on the little meat right here, okay? And we make the space, watch what I'm gonna do. I make space and I put my elbow all the way up here over his shoulder. And my head shifts to the other side. So go ahead, get into position, John. So my head's over here on this side. He's still trying to finish his double leg. I'm gonna now drop on my left butt cheek, staying on my side. And then what I'm gonna show you guys is look at my left foot. Okay, come on over here. My left foot in this case, sometimes it'll be in a butterfly hook. Can you step over one? Step over just one leg. Good, sometimes it'll be like this and you'll be here and you'll finish the choke. Okay, I'm trying to keep this a little loose, guys, so I don't rip Sasha's neck. Or it could be here, or it could also be in half guard. So can we show half guard real quick? So it could be in half guard with the high, high elbow guillotine. So in the case that I'm showing today, I'm gonna place my foot here, okay? Now, when I'm here and I have this high elbow guillotine, I'm wrapping him up and then I finish the choke and then Sash taps and everything's great. But you're gonna have a guy sometimes that is gonna roll over before you can cinch it. So when you drop into position and you go here, he's gonna roll over. So what I'm gonna do first, if I still have, don't go that far, can you just go, yeah. I'm gonna be following him. Now a lot of you guys are gonna try to follow him to the mount, okay? And that's not wrong, okay? Especially if I was tight. So come on back, I'll show that real quick. Let's just say I was super tight. I wrapped him and he rolled over. He, he, we could go right to the mount. You see how I'm posted on my forehead? And then I drop my stomach and I finish the choke. Okay, that's fine. So if you're real tight, I guess that would be step number one. Just go with him, choke him in the mount. Now, what happens all too often is you won't be as connected to him. This leg that wraps really high, 
when you guys are here, it's not as connected. And he's gonna get a little bit of space between your leg and him. As he goes, we're gonna follow with a bridge. Notice my right elbow is still high elbow guillotine over his shoulder. My head cannot be here anymore. See, he's using the floor to keep my head from being over there. Remember when he was like this, my head was over here on the high elbow. So because the floor is in the way, as he drops, my head's gonna go up and I'm gonna follow all the way around, posting my elbow on the mat. So this elbow will be on the mat, my forehead will be posted, and I will be more or less side controlled. And then I really like this position. Again, this is something that everyone has witnessed Marcelo Garcia use, and it's just great. So when I'm here, I go high elbow, he rolls over, and I go with him. And now once I'm here, guys, look, no need to mount. When you mount, you actually involve the legs too much. Some, it makes it harder for my high, high elbow. And then if his butterfly hooks come in, it's just harder to finish your choke. I want to be here, like this. And I'm trying, again, I'm trying to do this without squeezing. And then now I'll apply the force. My stomach will come down. I'll make the grip. My stomach will come down. Now, some of you guys will say, ah, oh, my shoulders don't work like that. I, I can't. I can't do this, you know, just that alone is very difficult, okay, and I understand you. So we have backup plans, okay? So that's for those guys that have the high elbow and you wanna keep it. Either mount or top side control. Now, let's say he gets a little further away from me. Let's say I go to the position, but this time when he rolls, he's too far. Notice the high elbow is gone. His arm has escaped. So his arm escaped from this position to where his shoulder is there. No more high elbow. Release, and then I'm just gonna cup the shoulder, load my toes, I have chin, the chin strap, and the underhook. We have to get over his head with our body. Just like I show you guys on the Sanchez Pass, if you guys wanna reference that video, it's a big part of my game right here. I'm gonna hit a high bridge, and rotate over into top side control. Once you guys are right here, just basics. Pushing off my toes, release the head into the cross face, and lock your hands. Once you guys do that, I'm shoulder pressuring, I'm backing my butt up to kill his hips. See how I'm on my toes? Then my leg will get inside into his armpit, toes dug in the mat, shoulder smash right here. So now when he tries to move, it's very difficult. If you choose, you can sprawl. But remember, if we have his elbow out, I always choose to keep this knee up. I've got some people out there that have been watching my videos and I know I've, it's not wrong, but I know a lot of you guys are wrestlers and your brain tells you that you always have to be like this. And remember, there, you can control some, a man like this, for sure. And, and when I first got into jiu-jitsu, I had a real hard time with trying to understand the principles of being up here on your knees. It's not wrong. There are multiple ways to control people, okay? So one way to control someone is to smash them, okay? Like you guys are controlling uh, like an animal. If you guys set a trap for an animal, it's called a deadfall. Animal goes in and eats the bait, the stick falls, and the big heavy rock lands on top of the animal, traps it by its sheer size and weight. You can do that. You can hold somebody and he tries to move, okay? And I'm smashing him with heavy pressure. Okay, in wrestling, a lot of times it's a half Nelson. Or you can also trap an animal with a cage where they walk inside the cage, the cage door slams shut, and the animal has no gravity on them, but they are still stuck. This would be an example of that. If I'm here, I have like no weight on Sash, very little, if any. But because Sasha's elbows are out, he cannot turn to his side, he is locked in a cage. There is no weight on him right now. And when you guys understand this, it's crazy. You'll you first look at it and you'll say, that's crap, the guy could bridge. Go ahead and hit a high bridge, Sasha. And if he goes that way, which is probably his only option, he can't turn into me because of this arm. Go ahead and turn into me to show that. See how there's no weight on you, but you can't move because you're right elbow. Keep trying. Come on, try hard. 
There's, and there's zero weight. I got tons of space. If he bridges and rolls the other way, so what? I've still got his arm right here. He's not getting out of here. And now that he's here, I'm ready to attack. I can go for my gift wrap. I can take his back. I can try to look, attack this arm. There's a Kimura, whatever. But the point is, there's different ways to look at side control. So this is really what I'm doing right now is I'm tacking onto this lesson uh, a little bit of side control information because there's people out there that will say, oh, you have to control like this. I had a guy, again, I wasn't, I don't think I ever have to reply to this guy, but he, he posted a video of, of Henry Aikens and Henry was talking about this kind of control, which I really like as well. I teach a lot. It's called the, uh, I call it the doorstop position. It's not the only way to control in side control. Okay, there, this is still a very valid way of controlling side control. Whether here, whether here, or here, or here. There's all different ways of controlling, guys. And you guys wanna learn multiple ways. Okay, all right, enough of that. Let's get back to the lesson. You guys are like, thank you. Okay, I get here, he gets here. Now, I'm just gonna get on top of the side control. I'm gonna show it to you one more time. Here we go. High up a guillotine. He's driving to finish the takedown. I attempt to wrap him up. You see how he went away? I go underhook and up on top. Right hip is down. Now, release the head. It's okay, because we're gonna get the standard position. I don't want him to ghost, ghost me right now. When I release, my shoulder hits the face. So when he tries to ghost, I'm not letting him move. I'm getting real heavy. Shoulder smash. Backward walk, killing the hips. Navigate into the armpit, toes on the mat. Shoulder smash, chest down, okay? That's a good thing to learn, just to come on top. So in your tournament, you're gonna get two points. You're gonna get your sweep points. He flees the submission. He's afraid of his queen getting taken, so he gives you his rook or his bishop or his knight, okay? Or a pawn for that matter. The point is, attack the big piece, and then he gives you a little piece. Okay, now. Last situation, you guys are gonna love this one. This is really, really good, okay? I'm gonna put this arm around the neck, I'm gonna set up my guillotine, high elbow guillotine, okay? Same thing happens, but I'm not going to just get side control. I'm still going for the finish. He gets away from me. Go ahead. As we go, he gets away. Look what I'm gonna do, guys. Normally, chin strap, right? Watch what I do instead. I don't grab the chin this time. Open your hand, like so. Open your hand, big open hand. Push it in as deep as you can. My right hand still goes for the underhook, and my left hand is wide open, putting pressure against his chest and going up against his neck as much as possible. Don't switch to the chin strap. It'll loosen everything. Go deep, connected, high bridge, and now I'm on top. Now the difference is, you'll stay there, my hand is now here, okay? It usually arrives somewhere in the high uh, abdominal region, and here's my goal. I wanna crawl this hand all the way up to my booby, okay? Squeeze a little chi-chi, okay, right here. This is what I want. Once I can reach my nipple, my, my boob, I'm good to go, okay? So watch this, I need to make a little bit of space and we're gonna talk about actually how it also works. See my hand here? Now, I lay on it with my chest or my, my upper abdomen. Now come on over here, John, so that we're gonna look at Sasha's right hand. So his left hand can't get in the ball game. See, I've got the underhook, his left hand can't go anywhere. Now, his right hand can still try to defend. So. My chest being connected, I'm gonna give him a little bit of space. Come on over here, John. See how he can now take his right hand and pull up my hand, either fingers or even wrist. See that? So the way I wanna take that away is by closing the space. Go ahead and get to it now. It's real difficult. Now what if you went to the other avenue? Yeah, through there. See how he can barely reach my wrist, feel that? And then with the pressure of my chest, Sash, try to pull at that wrist and pull it down. See, so what I'm doing is I'm making my belly real big. I'm pushing my belly into him so that when he pulls up my wrist, there's so much friction and this hand is like grabbing a handful of 
jelly beans right here. I can barely hold it with my fingers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now what I need to do though is I need a little bit of space, crawl, smash. A little bit of space, crawl, smash. And keep doing that until you're happy. And when are we happy? When we reach this spot right here. Okay? That's how you're gonna remember. So you guys are gonna be here. Right now I'm on my upper abdomen and he could be trying to pull at my hand and then I'm gonna go here. I just adjusted right now, you probably couldn't see it. I made about maybe an inch, I moved. Again, get in close, I don't know if anything can be seen with the camera, but as Sasha is, is trying to uh, maneuver, he's trying to get to my hand, I'm just moving in again, and now I'm up to my boot. So, and now try to pull it down, it's like not gonna happen. Now watch, my left foot is up, in wrestling what we call 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is north where his head is. I don't want my foot here. If he bridges, he will make me off balance. See that? Okay, and then he'll access. I put my foot here, so now he goes, hit the bridge, and he doesn't move. Now that I'm here, all I have to do, guys, is lift and squeeze. And you end up with a one-arm choke. Now, a lot of guys are gonna go, this looks like muscle, and it's not. It is not muscle. It is a choke. I'm gonna get it as deep as I can, and then just like a gi choke, I keep going back to this, guys, just like a gi choke, you're gonna be pulling out against that neck. My hand goes all the way up here, this is my grip. I squeeze with my fingers against my chest, and I pull my elbow back and squeeze my, and flex my biceps. Okay, so one more time, let's go get back to the guillotine. So we have the high elbow guillotine off the double leg. I go here, but he goes there. When I come on top, see my hand right here? Grab, my, don't grab his chin. Don't go to the chin. Go to, your, go to your chest and lay flat on him. Once I do that, I lift his head and I plant at 12 o'clock. Don't use a ton of muscle when you do this. Go slow. Just control the guy. When he tries to move, he's moving around. See how my right hip is down? He's trying to loosen everything and do that. I go deeper. See, I just took a little moment, I went deeper. Keep moving. I wait for that right moment. Deeper, just, I got it now. Now as he tries to move and resist, I'm just gonna squeeze, and I get an easy tap, okay? You've gotta get it up deep enough so that by the time you pull, you get the choke. Just like when you do a gi choke, and if you were to go low, it wouldn't choke. But if you go high enough in the back, now when it's head down, when you do this, it chokes. It's the same thing. We just have to get that, because our arm is all the way around his neck, it's not like a cross collar choke up here. Because your arm is all the way around his neck, I just need this hand right here to be here, and then I can squeeze and pull my elbow and get that choke, okay? Again, not likely you're gonna do this in the standing position. This is best in side control, also in mount. You can do it in mount too, but side control is best. You got great stability, great balance. Right hip down, left leg at 12 o'clock. Look at my legs, making an L shape. Proper position, here. This hand also creating base and pressure as well. So there's no way to get rolled. Okay, last time, I promise. Here we go guys, for those that need the extra, extra movement. Again, he just shot in on me, I make a little space, and I'm going up, you see? I threaten him, don't grab the chin, here it goes. Hand, on, hand open against his body, up and over, he's trying to resist now. I pulse my hand, plant the leg at 12 o'clock, little adjustment, and choke, okay? All right, how do you guys like that information? Okay, <laughs> lots of stuff there. Uh, thank you, Sash. Teach Me Grappling, we have our Patreon account. Please, click the link below. If this helped you today, just like when you guys pay for your coffee, pay for everything else in this world, Please, if you guys, if I helped you at all, if you learned something, donate something. Help me out, help this channel out. I'm gonna keep bringing everything, okay? Five bucks, 10 bucks, 25 bucks. Okay, whatever you guys can do. Thank you so much to all of you uh, contributors already, and all you guys that haven't jumped on board yet, please jump on board. This train isn't gonna stop as long as you guys keep supporting. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.